Hello and welcome everybody, I'm Madrybred and these are 7 great tips to improve at Hearts of Iron 4. Number 1. Research radio before you get into any ground battle. The radio is a very early game tech that grants your army 5% reinforcement rate. Every hour that a battle goes on for, the game will roll dice to see if any of the reserves move into the active battle. The higher your reinforce rate is, the better chance that your reserves will join the fight, making it an extremely important stat. Even getting the 5% you get from radio is a huge benefit. Number 2. Start researching land doctrines early. Land doctrines are very slow to research without boosts from your national focus, but will give you huge benefits. By starting your research on them early, you could easily get 2 or 3 techs ahead of your opponent due to the lack of an ahead of time penalty, detriment for doctrines. Even if the individual bonuses you're ahead of your opponent don't come into play much in the battle, land doctrine techs often come with new tactics for your generals that can swing an otherwise equal battle in your favor. Number 3. Building infrastructure will increase the resource yield of an area. You'd be surprised how many people miss this, but building infrastructure on top of natural resources will get you more of that resource. It's a really great way to save civilian factories by not having to trade them away, while also getting you more civilian factories by people trading with you to get your extra resources. The more of the resources are already naturally on that tile, the more you'll get for each piece of infrastructure. The only condition is that synthetic refineries don't count and won't give you extra oil and rubber based on that infrastructure. Infrastructure also speeds up the rate at which you can build other buildings on that tile, which is pretty nice. Number 4. Take into consideration how long you have until your first war starts, and how much you'll get out of your decisions you make before the war breaks out. For some perfect examples of what I mean, we're going to look at the Soviet Union and China. The Soviet Union is a late game country. This is because to avoid civil war they need to purge their own officers and political advisors early through national focuses. That takes a long time to finish and leaves the military massively weakened for entire years. Because of this, you probably won't want to fight any major wars until at least 1940. You should make decisions with this in mind. Research industrial technology as fast as possible, and make sure to research the ability to make any kind of unit you're going to want to produce earlier than you normally would. The sooner you start production and upgrade your ability to produce, the longer you'll be able to take advantage of this before your first major war. You can also get an early head start on doctrines, knowing that you'll have plenty of time to research them. You can completely neglect otherwise very important war tech like radio and support weapons until you're a year away from the war because you know you'll have time. On the other hand, with China, you know you're going to be in a war very early in the game. You want to get your military technology much earlier than you normally would, even if it means neglecting your industry a bit. As nice as it would be to have a better industry, your top priority is not dying in the war. Number 5. Manually control tanks and motorized divisions to make small breaks in the front line and encircle small pockets of enemies. Rather than always pushing the front line back, it's best to create small pockets of enemy troops whenever you can. If they're completely cut off from their army, they'll quickly run out of supplies and get completely wiped out when attacked. Rather than being pushed back, it will wipe out massive amounts of the enemy's manpower and force them to train new troops during the battle. Number 6. If you have naval superiority, exploit it as much as you can. Constantly have small groups of divisions doing naval invasions along the enemy coasts to force them to defend their shores. The more troops they're defending their shores with, the less they can spare for the front line with you. Just make sure to remember to set some fleets to escort the convoys during the invasions, or you'll lose the whole force. I've made that mistake too many times. And number 7, always check your division layouts. Many countries have hilariously bad divisions they are going to need to change, such as the Italian tank division having more horses than tanks, or the French tank division having no infantry, so it doesn't have nearly enough organization to actually win a fight. When fixing your divisions, try to aim for a combat width of 10, 20, or 40. The higher the better, but make sure you're going to have enough manpower and supplies to support the division change before you actually do it. If you like this video and you want to see more Hearts of Iron 4, I'll have a card in the top right to my streaming series where I play as Romania. If you're new to Hearts of Iron 4 and you just want to learn how to play, I'll have a link to my tutorial video on screen. 
Let me know in the comments if you have any tips you'd like to share, I'd love to have more feedback. Thank you very much for watching, and until next time, have a nice day.